Faridonko. Erastus has been in and out of KNUSD campus um, since media. yesterday, and he has the very latest on what is happening there. Erastus, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Erastus. Good morning. Good morning. So this morning, when you reported on the 6 a.m. news, you were talking about how campus was deserted, everything was locked up beyond, apart from Brunei, that's in the hostel that has been reserved for international students. Has that situation changed or that's how it is now? No, that's how it is. In fact, I'm standing in front of Queen's Hall now. Uh, the place is locked. Uh, we have some of the hall executives in there, uh, but um, they are not allowing anybody in. And there is no student in there as well. Uh, you go to other halls as well, uh, Independence Hall, Republic Hall, where I'm just from, uh, Continental and other areas. The whole place is locked up. At uh, Unity Hall, for example, they have the military inside guarding the place. And so uh, we, are, we are made to understand that by 2 p.m. yesterday, they had to drive all students away. Um, and so nobody's on campus at the moment, except the Brunei uh, hostels where we have the foreign uh, students. That is where you have some activity, some students uh, in there. But aside that, it's only the military on campus. So they drove students away. Do we know where the students went? Well, many of the students left. On their own in fact they started leaving in the morning and so they they left in batches they brought in uh buses on campus so many of them left and so i must say that um by that time you will have just uh, some uh, pockets of people left uh, on campus and those are the ones i i learned were uh made to leave I thought yesterday. Now, Erastus, we know that non-residential students often live very close to campus, i.e. they are, say, Bomso, Asia, and the like. What's the feel like in those areas? Have you been able to pick any feelers from there? Well, um, in those areas, you wouldn't be able to identify who is a student and who is not, except you, if you want to go to the various hostels where they lodge. Uh, for that one, we just started a trip. We've not been able to go there. Um, but right. the areas on campus, that is where the action is. And um, they, they don't want any students on campus. But outside cap campus, is it, pos uh, it is possible that you might have some students who lodge in hostels over there, maybe staying over. Now, you, you, were, you were reporting earlier that security is quite heavy on campus with um, their military personnel being inside Unity Hall, for instance. Have we, however, seen any school authorities or school officials around? Um, what is the word from them this morning? Well, um, I went to the administration just about an hour ago, but there was nobody there with the exception of the military personnel who were guarding the place. Um, I have not cited any of the uh, administrative staff, and not even the university relations officer who is always on campus. Maybe uh, in due course or in the course of the day, we might cite uh, some of them because I'm learning from him uh, that there will be a council meeting. I don't know whether that is going to be today or this week, but so far, um, we only have the Zoom Lion sweepers who are cleaning and tidying up the place. Now, outside campus itself, you understand the Chancellor of the University, Otun Fosse to the second, has called all parties, has summoned all parties, I should say, so that he begins to try to arbitrate the matter. What more do we know about this? Well, yesterday, uh, the Otun Force rep, and he's also representing the Asantaman Council, uh, the chief of Bantuma, um, Bafo Asaru Usua Mankwetia, deceased, uh, came on campus. Uh, to assess the uh, damage for himself. He says that Otunfo is out of the country and they want to assess the situation, assess the damage caused, uh, listen to parties, and when he comes, they can brief him as to uh, what uh, transpired here. Again, the Assantement Council has invited um, uh, uh, feeding factions, I mean the student body, the administration, and, uh, and all stakeholders on Thursday to meet them at the Menshia Palace. They want to listen to them officially, uh, both sides, on what transpired, what their grievances are, and they want to liaise with government afterwards uh, to be able to solve the underlying factors and be able to uh, pave a way 
for reopening the university because that is what they think is important at the moment. Were they able to give us any timelines as to when they want to finally resolve this matter and have school reopened? Well, um, all the parties involved are not able to give us any timelines. Yesterday, the investor relations officer, uh, Mr. Kwame Abua, was not able to give us any timelines. He says it's too early uh, to, to, okay. to, to say that because then the council will meet. After they've, they've met, they will have to um, fix the damage on campus first before the students come. And so if that is going to take a while, that would determine how long uh, the students will have to stay in the house. Thank you very much, Erastus Asari Donko, for that report and the sterling job you've been doing from yesterday. We'll come back to you as and when there are updates. So that was Erastus reporting from Kumasi. Situation remains the same. KNUSD, we can confidently report, is a ghost town with locked halls and security personnel tightly guarding the place, closely guarding the place, the place and international students only at the GUSSS hostels, that's Gus hostels, that was uh, popularly known as Brunei. Asante Niotun for to the second has summoned all parties for an arbitration and the university authorities are willing to attend that as well. There's a council meeting for the university expected today or this week. We'll be bringing you those updates. But let's come back to the studio. More allegations have been made by students of brutality. Teachers caning students, or sorry, lecturers caning students, uh, persons being asked to kneel in the rain and what have you. Before I come to my panelists to, to try and get to the bottom of all of this and try and look for, so that we try and fashion out a solution, let me invite you into the conversation. 0244-340-437. That's a WhatsApp number. At Joy997FM is the Twitter handle. Joy99.7FM is the Facebook page. Leave us a comment, tweet at us, retweet us, use the hashtag joy sms let your voice be heard anyone has a few of your messages now okay so the first one says it's very regrettable that intelligence couldn't pick up the knusc students unrest long time before it happened for it to have averted the unfortunate hostilities and wanton destruction of properties for the uni not to have been shut down indefinitely and thrown the academic calendar into disarray though the students didn't do well but the fact is that the university management body especially the VC should be blamed for taking certain unpopular decisions without proper engagement with stakeholders Wachuku Jr. says that all male halls in our universities engage in vandalism and hooliganism on our campuses if converting them into mixed halls will help stop these acts then I think we should all support the vice chancellor in any case hall status cannot affect one's academic performance and he says I stand with the VC Schiffman from Atons who says the conduct of the university students in KNUSD must be condemned by all. Why must students demonstration resort to this kind of violence? I pray and hope that the authorities would sit and come out with the best measures to make sanity prevail. In the university, Otunfo says it is a very sad spectacle to see students packing out and the properties destroyed at KNUSD. I stand with the students but I think we must all condemn the channel used in registering their protests. Hope that the appropriate channels will be used in the future. I want to urge the Minister of State in charge of tertiary to up his game. His continuous inaction on matters affecting tertiary students is not helping matters. Alaji Willipin, Efia Kuma says, President Akufado summons the security minister and education minister to his outfit for what? Are they not the ones that brought the policy of conversion? Mr. President, you better regroup yourself and give second thoughts about this conversion because to me, it is not a good policy for the future of our tertiary education. Otherwise, the students will continue to do something untoward and that will be the most unfortunate. Thank you very much, Enima. Thanks uh, to all you all for your messages. Keep them coming. Um, 0244-340-437 at Joy997FM on Twitter, Joy99.7FM on Facebook. Remember, the hashtag is JoySMS. We'll take these important messages, but let me say good morning to Gloria Ofuiwede. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll be speaking with Gloria, Enima, and Efiba when we come back from these messages. Stay with us. I need a bank account for my sister to transfer money into for my mother's sickness and you are saying let's talk. Oh, sweetheart. Ah, hello, daddy. This is Kwame. Kwame, is everything all right? 
It's your son Kwame. Let me put him on our speaker. Eh? Oh, daddy, everything's okay. I'm just calling to remind you of my school fees. It seems you've forgotten. Oh. You know what? I will let Aloche bring it to you at the school on Monday. Hey, but daddy, please send it through my GT bank account. Hey, Kwame, where did you get the money to open a bank account? <gasps> oh, mommy, I don't have a Pesua, but with GT bank, all I have to do is dial star 737 star 1 hash. I answer a few questions and my account number is ready. I own a bank account even without one CD. <laughs> daddy, this one here yeah, is special. Do you mean if I dial star 737 star 1 hash on my phone i'll be able to open an account with gt bank yes daddy hey, this is special <laughs> hey daddy please tell mommy to also open an account with gt bank Kwame, i've already opened the account we'll talk later okay bye pick your phone and dial star 737 star one hash and you are through you don't need any money call us on toll free 0800 124 000 guaranteed trust bank wouldn't you rather bank with us Abeku, my dear, my business way dear. We use more data than voice calls. Mm. But this by force bundle my network gives me the M1. Mm. I need flexibility in China to grow my business. Then move to Vodafone Smart Business. Mm. It's a flexible mobile package for business that allows you to be your own boss. But how? You decide how much data, foreign or local call bundles your business needs. Hey, sir. Arne, move your business into the future with Vodafone Smart Business and enjoy rollover of unused data to save your company money. I see. Whatever the style of your business, Vodafone Smart Business has the solution for you. Call 030-233-4040 or visit www.vodafone.com.gh for a slash business for a slash smart business for more details. The future is exciting. Ready? Would you buy a blade that doesn't cut? How about a freezer? That doesn't cool enough to freeze and what of medicine that wouldn't cure you or take your pain away no way so why would you buy a mattress that does not provide you with good quality sleep and rest as humans we spend about a third of our lives in bed since you are going to spend that much time wouldn't you rather be lying on a mattress that is clean and just right for your body be smart treat yourself well don't spend one third of your life sleeping on the wrong mattress. Or else, you do to yourself. Latest foam, your partner for life. Nationwide Medical Insurance, the leader in private health insurance, has deployed superior technology to make your healthcare experience more convenient and exciting. With the Nationwide mobile app, you can order your prescription drugs and we will deliver to your doorsteps. With over 600 dependable healthcare service providers, you're just a step away locating your service provider of choice and accessing hospital claim information in real time. Our corporate clients are guaranteed timely corporate utilization reports. We provide on-site clinics to give Give employees access to health care in the comfort of their offices. Enjoy these amazing benefits and so much more by signing on to Nationwide Medical Insurance today. Call us on toll-free number 800 222 or visit our website www.nationwidemh.com. Nationwide Medical Insurance. Join the healthcare family. Move on up, 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 up. Moving on up is paying from your phone and getting looks of approval from your friends. Moving on up is doing all your banking from your bathroom like a boss. Moving on up is losing your wallet, but your money is still safe. Moving on up is attaching any bank's card to the Echo Bank mobile app. Oh yeah, download the Echo Bank mobile app. Make we go and bank like a boss. Move on up with Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. The 2018 Capital Markets Week is here. Ghana Securities Industry Association, the umbrella body of firms regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission, celebrates the 2018 Capital Markets Week from October 20th to 26th under the theme, The Role of Good Corporate Governance in the Transformation of Ghana's Capital Markets. Key activities to be held during the week include a health walk, date Saturday, October 20th, from the Bema Camp Sports Complex through the Nicholson Park, Bema Camp Traffic Light, Alwax Stadium, 37 Runabout, and back to 
to Bemba Camp. Media launch, Monday, October 22nd, 2018. Venue, Ghana Stock Exchange Lecture Room. Ambassadorial Wing, Sixth Floor, City House, from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Investor Education Programs. Throughout the week on GTV Adult Education Program, time 6 to 7 p.m. each day. Capital Market Seminar. Date, October 24th at the Labadi Beach Hotel from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Keynote Speaker, Honorable Ken Oforiata, Minister of Finance. The seminar will bring together policymakers, regulators, institutional investors, academia, the media, and other key actors in the financial market to deliberate on relevant and topical issues facing the industry. Attendance is strictly by invitation. Capital Market Tertiary Quiz and Debate. Participating Business Schools. University of Ghana Business School, KNUST, University of Cape Coast, Central University, Ashesi University College, and University of Education Winneba Kumasi Campus. Date, Friday, October 26th. Venue, RS Amegashi Auditorium, University of Ghana Business School. Time, 8.30 a.m. Partners, Securities and Exchange Commission, Ghana Stock Exchange, and Central Securities Depository. Official media partners, Joy Business, TV3, and GTV. Supporting sponsors, EDC Investments, Stanley Ghana, Data Bank Group, CDH Asset Management Limited, Bora Capital, Sidon Investments Limited, Borders Advisors Limited, UMB Stock Broker, Frontline Capital Advisors, Carl Assets, Crystal Capital Investments, Republic Securities, and Black Star Advisors. You welcome back. It's three minutes past eight here on the Super Morning Show. Joy 99.7 FM. I am Daniel Daz here with my good friend Enimwa Enimado and of course Madame Gloria Ofori Buedu. Um, Enimwa is of course a, a, a member of this team. Gloria, uh, Madame Ofori Buedu is a um, lecturer at the Gimpa Business School. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, good morning, Daniel. And good morning, Gloria. It's very morning. nice to see you. Finally <laughs> meet you. Great. Same uh, here. Yes, so let me, let me start with you, Madam. Um, in the first place, where we are now, we saw, we heard of the brutality on Friday night, and then we saw what happened, the demonstration, the vandalism on Monday morning. Some would say that this university has been riding a tiger from the very beginning, the way they've been treating the students, but the students have also been unruly. Uh, where do you stand on this? I, I just think we have to look at the remote cause and the immediate cause. And the remote cause, as everybody agrees, is due to the mixing of females in the um, traditional male halls. That is the unity and university hall. So I guess that's what sparked all these things. And it reminds me of, um, you know, when it came to mixing races in public schools in the U.S., there was this case, Brown versus Board of Education, where a father of a black girl who had a white school nearby decided that her, his daughter could go to that school instead of traveling all over town to get to a black school. And so that brought a Supreme Court decision which said that public schools which are discriminated you know, between blacks and whites is not fair. So all blacks and whites can't be mixed. And honestly, there was a fear. People were mad. They didn't want to mix and the police had to escort children to school, black children to white schools. So that's the same thing. When this issue of mixing sexes in the all or traditional male halls came up, there had to be police. I, I went to tech and I saw a police armor vehicle parked by, and it reminded me of the backlash when it came to Brown versus Board of Education in the U.S. Is it not a stretch to equate... Um racial segregation with what is happening now, considering the fact that the students have also complained about the mood of the mixing, and they are even talking about how it's beyond the mixing. It's about how students relate with faculty. I and think, I think, that, I think that we've had the university there forever, probably for over 50 years, 60, I guess, and there's not been any complaints of that sort. But it's definitely the mixing. And racial mixing... And sex or sexism, mix, uh, sex mixing amounts to the same thing. You know, the sexism, the phobia of living with both sexes, mixing them in a hall, and then the phobia of mixing blacks and whites in a school, and the backlash. It's similar. I mean, if you read history, this is just a, a similar, you know. Um, um, yes, so, so anyway, <laughs> you, you have um, studied how people think, uh, done psychology for a while. 
would you say that this is what we are dealing with a phobia with mixing um and and again uh, madam afraid we do mention how the university has existed for a long Call time until gloria gloria. yeah until gloria <laughs> <laughs> no need to stress let me do let me do anti gloria this morning <laughs> yeah so so anti gloria has mentioned how the university has been existing for a long time yes but the complaints have been about this vice chancellor who was appointed not too long ago and how he is dealing <laughs> with the students so anyway uh, would you say that's okay. what is happening now um so i agree with the minister of information designates Kujo Ponkuma, who says that there's there's an issue with the confluence of issues so it looks as if we're dealing with more than one thing and the more than the, the more that this unfolds the more we're not sure exactly what it is about i could be um i mean i think two days ago if you had asked me i would definitely have said that you know this really is about the bringing of women into um, the, mixing. The, the mixing oh, the, the mixing of of the sexes you know but but now um there are so many allegations of violence and very deep humanizing behavior. I mean, I entered tech when I was about 17, 18, and I cannot imagine being caned. I cannot imagine having to kneel down in the rain at, at that point in time of my life when I'm transitioning into an adult. And so it's kind of difficult at the moment for me to say that it's this or it's that, because it does seem to be a lot of, of issues that um, is being dealt with. I have seen videos of persons being asked to stand on tables. I have seen videos of you know uh, people being lashed in their hands Yes. In university. In university. Yes. I mean, mm. and it's, 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 it's beyond me because, I mean, a few years after that, going to school outside, you're, you're, I met so many people, and a lot of people younger than me, who are working to pay for their own school fees. So, you know, and even now, I mean, I have a few friends who, whilst they were in university, they were trying to sell um, things. They were selling shoes. They were, you know, trading to pay for their fees. And so you're not exactly dealing with children on some level. You are dealing with young adults who are transitioning and are going through their own thing. So to treat them like that, I mean, I don't want to say what will you expect, but to treat them like that, I think is very disrespectful. Well, and, and Antigua, you, you are a lecturer and you, you deal with students sometimes. You, you feel that sometimes it becomes necessary to deal with students in that way, considering the fact that these persons don't seem to be taking their future seriously enough. Oh, I have, I have never had an issue with my students because I've gone three years of studying adult learning styles and training techniques. And with adult learning styles and training techniques, as a lecturer, you are merely a facilitator who guides students to learn. And a lot of students have experiences that you, the lecturer, may not have. So it's a matter of merging their experiences. But I still say that in, uh, in history, we have remote, every, every form of escalation or violence has remote and immediate causes. The remote cause is definitely the mixing of the sexes, as I've likened it to the mixing of the races. But because of that, it has, you know, caused other ripples, including violence, including people being so angry, including people even trying to justify why there's this violence. And in trying to justify the violence to the whole world, because now it's a global world, everybody's watching it and wondering why there's this show of Yeah, sexism. and I saw that feature on the BBC. You know, so in trying to justify it, all these issues come up. The past problems, um, past, um, what do you call it? past problems, past issues, even the thought of even bringing police armor vehicles onto campus is a whole issue. But if you've studied the race mixing, the xenophobia, and all the violence that takes place, there's definitely the need for some form of police guard because people get so offended. It's a psychological thing. People get so offended with the mixing that they can escalate, they can be violent. With the racial but mixing, it doesn't just yeah. begin with mixing, does it? Because oh, then again, please. yesterday, no, uh -huh. and, and if I may, then again, yesterday, too, mm -hmm. we, we had this conversation among alumni, among um, former former student leaders, and it became quite clear that this the mixing itself is not a standalone issue. Okay. So that university authorities have been trying to quote unquote deal with unruly male hall residents 
And the mixing was seen as one of those days. In fact, Prof. Ellis mentioned in the year 2014, I remember anyone making mention of it yesterday, that he believes that Katanga and Conti boys are too rowdy. And so his solution will be to was mix to it. But Daniel, exactly. you see, for me, that's kind of where the problem began. Because you presented the mixing or the introduction of women into halls as a sort of punishment for bad behavior. So how do you then, in the minds of these students, transition them to say that, okay, in 2018, we're taking 16,888 students, 10,000 will be male, 6,717 will be female. That's 40% of, of, um, of, of the kids that are coming in. How are you transitioning them for them to understand that we've lowered our standards somewhat so that we can have more women doing um, science and technology, we're trying to get a 40% um, ratio male to, to female, and so therefore we need you to accommodate these women based on these things. When you've set a foundation a few years ago that if you don't stop being unruly, if you don't stop vandalism, if you don't stop being hooliganistic, if you don't stop being boisterous, we will bring women. How do you transition from a punishment when, when you tell somebody you're punishing them for something, how do you then transition them to accommodate that and not see it as a punishment? And so for me, that is really the foundation of this problem, the way this issue was presented. Because I don't want to think, Auntie Gloria, and I know that you don't want to think either, that in this day and age, men and boys are this resistant to coexisting with women. And you know, of course, you Black I mean, made... Fun fact, fun fact, no one has complained. Well, no one about complained the about the mixing <laughs> of let's, Africa. Let's, no let's, one complained about about the mixing of Africa hall. Which Africa? No, so Africa is the all female hall, which was also mixed. The boys moved in gladly. <laughs> no one, no one really complained. But Okuja Tua Blackwa yesterday did say um, on on Prime, on sorry, on PM Express that you know even these boys that are complaining to some extent he doesn't understand because their chicks are spending the nights in their rooms anyway. <laughs> So unless let, it is because you are gnashing. Um, okay, let me yeah. come, let me come back to yeah. I think I to get a response to you these see, issues um, of how yeah, the issue was broached in the, the first now, place. Now 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 there's conflict. And in conflict resolution, you have to listen to all sides, but you definitely have to look at the remote and immediate cause. Okay. And then you also realize that we are in a global village. What we are what is going on is um this issue of mixing, mm. sex mix uh, mixing. It has come up because now there's a need for equal balance of b boys and girls, men and women in education. Because I always con uh, you know, quote the World Bank, which says that the World Bank report says that limited educational opportunities for girls and barriers to completing a number of years of education cost countries between $15 trillion and $30 trillion in lost lifetime productivity and earnings. And the UN, the World Bank, and the global world have realized that it's very important to have a balance of females and males to stay in school as long as possible so that they can come out better equipped for jobs. And there's a loss when females don't. So they are all efforts. In, even the University of Ghana has recently come up with an almost 50-50 parity of admissions. Not 40-50, 50-50 parity. So it's a global world. I believe Tech also wants to do that. You know, the NPP, which is now the ruling government, talks of excessively promoting science, technology, and engineering and maths. That's STEM across all levels of education. And you, you hear all these arguments in favor of getting a parity of women as far as tertiary education so that we can have a positive economic impact. In doing that, there's, this mission has come on. As to how the advocacy was done to mix them, whether it was done properly, whether it was done to stem hooliganism or vandalism, which I don't even want to talk about because it's a shame in this 2018 of our you know, development. Whether, whatever the reason, probably there should have been an advocacy, but it's important that we maintain this parity across all education. So, your levels. argument is so that no matter so what the reason was, my, the, the my step is in the right direction. Is that there is conflict as of now. Okay. There's a need to resolve the conflict. The conflict definitely is escalated or began with this mixing of the sexes in the hall. It promoted some form of sexism, which is equivalent to racial uh, racism, ethnicism, xenophobia, all the hate crimes and differences. It did promote it. And as a result, there's been violence. As a result, there's been the need for security. As a result, people are trying to justify the violence and even cover up, which I consider as hypocrisy. People want, want to try and say that it's not the mixing of the sexes. We love them, blah, blah, blah. But whatever it is, there's conflict. So in trying to resolve the conflict, we have to 
you know, call a spade a spade and, and, and not pretend. We have to say that this is what okay. has caused us a problem. How do we resolve it? And then in doing that, we can also look at the attendant issues that were used to justify this form of sexism. Okay. Um, 60 minutes past 80 on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. Things are getting heated up. Um, Gloria Furibwedu is a lecturer and a lawyer and um, Enimo Enimadu here is a member of the team. You're going to take these important messages. When we come back, we want to um, look at, okay, so now that we are where we are, we seem to be having some split hairs over what has really caused this. But now that we are where we are, can we find a way out of this? What are the ways that we are going to do that? Uh, we'll also be joined by Ifeva Harrison shortly, um, who is a student at KNUST. And there are also our friends in Kumase who will be joining us. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. It's a new day. I want you to first think big, not small. Think of how great we can be when we work together. Together, we can ensure that our hard work will provide a better future. Together, we can provide a foundation for you and your business to succeed, regardless of its size. Together, we can create opportunities for all. Bank with us today and let's journey forward together. Forward together. Cow Bank. Forward together. Time to own a hotel and spa apartment near Accra Mall and switch on your urban life with a cool price starting from 315,000 Ghana cities. Yes, you heard me. Choose our market's leading studio, one, two, or three bedroom apartment from Oasis Park Condominium at Tetakwashi and enjoy urban resort life. For this and more, call Evelyn on 0204-343-011 or Kojo on 0204-343-011. 008. This is another catered development by CPL developers. CPL developers built for life. The other day, as I was in my kitchen preparing my special jollof made with lily rice for my family, I heard a knock at the door. It was my mechanic. Instead of calling me to pick my car, he bought it himself. I said, Cho, he said, FO. I said, Take the car back. I will come and pick it myself. As I turned off the fire from under the lily jollof, there was another knock at the door. It was my neighbor. I said, neighbor, neighbor. He said, F4, my dog has jammed your wall again, oh. I said, don't be silly. You don't have a dog. My wife and kids came home, and we saw that he enjoyed. So, it was my pastor. He said, bless you. I said, bless you too. He said, did you come to church on Saturday? I said, Acho, but uh, why are you coming to tell me this on Wednesday? Having to fend off visitors at mealtimes because of Lele's tasty aromatic rice? Celebrate every mealtime by sharing with friends and family near or far. Lele. Tasty food. Happy family. Acho. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. 19 minutes past 8 here on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy. 99.7 minutes. Uh, 0.7 FM. Um, hashtag Joy SMS. I listen to Auntie Gloria on a doom. Uh, she is on. Okay. 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 George Fosu Boache just sent in that message. Yeah, I, I, I will not take messages uh, making presumptions about the panelists. Thank you very much, too, George, for your comments. I appreciate them. <laughs> um, I appreciate them. Please keep the comments on the issues themselves and not on the panelists as individuals. Okay, so assuming that what you are saying is the case, wouldn't it then be very difficult to look at a solution? Because here we are dealing with a way a people think. Antigua. Well... It's always important to change mindsets for development. I believe with the racism which occurred in, in terms of public education and integration, there has been a lot, there was a backlash, years of fights against merging the blacks and whites, but invariably, um, you know, development sense prevailed. And now, even most schools and colleges caught very intelligent black people for, from poor communities, sponsor them to be able to have an education through affirmative action so that they'll be productive citizens of the U.S. So I guess in the same way, we can gradually court, you know, work on mindsets, work on advocacy, look at the goal. The goal is development. The goal is, you know, improving on our GDP. As a, the goal is to have our economy function. 
you know, to get more hands on deck, more human resource development. If we look at the goal, maybe with time we can, you know, um, change mindsets so that the, we can't eliminate sexism or racism totally, but at least we can minimize it and prevent it in some circumstances. Because we are looking at the goal, development, development, positive development, economic growth. Is this not a brute force tactic? You are talking about gradually changing mindsets, uh, talking about bringing in 6,000 and adding to 10,000 immediately. Um, is, is that not a way of, you know, railroading this whole process? Um, I will say that um, if you look at the government's manifesto, that the MPP will aggressively promote science, technology, engineering, and math STEM across all levels. The goal, I'm, I'm not here to talk of, you know, but the goal is development, aggressive development. We can't wait forever to have our sisters and our daughters as semi-literates or illiterates. We can't. It's a cost to the country. Are you going to take care of all your sisters and your daughters who have not been to school? You, you will die early as a man. There's a need for double-income families. There's a need for you know, getting all human resources on board, getting all potential talents on board to create some, you know, innovation and some positive impact on so our economy. So we should look beyond what is happening right now? We should look at the, we should look beyond, we should talk to them, we should talk to all the parties that there's nothing wrong about getting women educated. Women don't smell, we are not dirty. In fact, women are attractive if, if made to, you know, be educated and acquire skills. So give us a chance to develop ourselves, to develop our sisters, our daughters, so that they can also help. The family budget should not be only from men, or you want it that way. If you do, then the stress will be on you. And no wonder the mortality rate of men in our part of the world is quite high vis-a-vis -vis women. So look at the big picture, the global picture. So uh, anyway, so it looks like... From the position that Auntie Gloria is speaking from, this is people failing to look at the bigger picture. And so the solution would be having them, encouraging them to look at the bigger picture. Is that the approach you would take if you were mediating this? Um, I think I, I definitely would um, do the, the bigger picture thing. But before I, I feel that the students maybe um, can move on to that, it's important that they feel heard. I mean, I listen to the dialogue every time one of these um, KNUSD students are speaking. And, and the thing for me that runs across all of it is that the feeling of not being heard, the feeling of not having their opinions validated, the feeling of them not um, being respected in what they think. And that definitely is the first step to um, resolving or, yeah, resolving this conflict, is hearing them, hearing their concerns, hearing about the things that are bothering them. Secondly, um, I like I said earlier, um, I don't want to believe that there is a, a problem with um, having females on campus or having females in the classroom. So even having pro um, females in the halls. I think that it really is about the way that it was approached and um, perhaps how the, the whole thing was presented. So for me, that's where I stand. I stand on it. But yes, definitely, Daniel. Um, I think that there has to be a lot of talking, a lot of dialogue, a lot of back and forth, and perhaps an apology. Um, because, you know, we know that corporal, um, sorry, corporate, sorry, corporal punishment is not reformative. We know that um, asking people to kneel down. We know that caning people does not necessarily change behavior. And on that level, I will ask for an apology, you know, to for the students who have been treated in that way. I think it's very inhumane at their age for them to have gone through that. After that has been done, and um, I guess hearts are open, then perhaps yes, definitely some dialogue um, moving forward. Okay. Uh, we are going to go to Kumasi shortly and, well, now, and speak with Ajwa, Ama, and Ya. Good morning, ladies. <coughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Uh, how's everyone doing? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and how's everyone doing? Oh, yeah, all fine. We're doing well. <laughs> Great. Um, we will be getting your perspectives on this very, very shortly. We want to know, first of all, what you think the real causes of this issue are. It seems like uh, we are splitting hairs over whether or not this is a matter of mixing the halls or this is a matter of you know, um, brutality on campus. From where you stand, what is the real cause of these issues? Okay, I think that the real cause of this issue is not um, 
it's not mixing the halls but rather um the disrespect for students and the brutalities being meted out to students that's the main cause yes uh, so what what makes you say that are you a resident of any of these halls yourself yeah i'm resident at brunei okay i, I i'm asking about um unity and university halls No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. In, I'm not in any of those halls. But then. Well, okay. So what? What we'll try and do is that we'll raise the lady's own phone, and we'll try and have a more fluid conversation so that we can fully understand exactly what's happening. We want to try and establish first of all if any of um, these ladies have been intimidated in any way when they moved into the halls. We have we have three ladies in in studio, uh, in Love FM in Kumase, and we would continue this conversation with them is 26 minutes past eight here on the super morning show enjoy 99.7 fm a number of your messages coming through we will be reading them shortly but if you're a young entrepreneur and you have a project that could change things in ghana don't wait any longer submit your project at startupadostotal.com and stand to win financial support professional coaching and publicity for your project a local jury will select three winners and a top female entrepreneur to learn more come visit us at startupadostotal.com terms and conditions on startupadostotal.com now, flying within West Africa just got better on Africa World Airlines starting this 1st October 2018. Enjoy direct flights from Freetown, Sierra Leone to Monrovia, Liberia, four times weekly on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Fly in style and comfort for as low as $199. You can also fly seamlessly from Accra to Lagos and Abuja, Nigeria, Lagos to Monrovia, Monrovia, Liberia, and Freetown, Sierra Leone, and Accra to Monrovia and Freetown with a world-class service. Book now on our website, www flyafricaworld.com pay with visa or mastercards mtn mobile money or call toll free 0800 200 200 or at any awa sales office you can also purchase awa tickets at our partner banks branches zenith gt uba umb and access bank as well as travel agents nationwide hashtag connecting africa um connecting west africa africa world airlines touching africa touching the world We'll be going on the phone line shortly to speak with Efiba Harrison, who is a student of KNUST. Uh, but I, I have here uh, Auntie Gloria Coates from uh, Martin Luther King, you know, the world-famous champion of civil rights. He says, Nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon which cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields it. It is a sword that heals. Um, he says, Violence as a way of achieving racial justice is both impractical and immoral. We have seen numerous allegations of students being attacked by security personnel on campus and persons being brutalized, people being hospitalized as a result. Would you say that these methods, even though you said that we should look at the bigger picture, would you say that these methods are uh, should be approved of? Um, I think that... Um when you look at the um, KNUST SRC constitution, okay, I, it says the Student Representative Council is a structure for students only, through which they can become involved in the affairs of the university, working in partnership with university authorities for the benefit of the university and its students. So I think that whatever must be in partnership with the SRC and university authorities for the benefit of the university and its students, it's what should prevail. So anything which is contrary to that, it's not, it's not right, you know. So at the end of the day, the SRC has a right to work with the university authorities, give them feedback as to what the students are experiencing in a peaceful manner, as you just read. And then the university authorities are also mandated to find out how they can work in partnership with the voice of the students, the spokesperson, that's the SRC, to come up with solutions. I think that's perfect. Now, the students feel however, aggrieved because they've been attacked however, by university uh, security. Yes, so if you feel aggrieved, 
there's a there's a you have spokespersons you have s houses that you represent talk to them every hall has a representative find a way of getting information to the authorities and ensure that the authorities also give you the necessary um, support i think that is better than breaking cars destroying offices <laughs> you know smashing motorbikes and what have you it's 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 not very proper for an academic institution to do that and of course that has been condemned by all student leadership that we've spoken to but they've also told us that they've sought such audiences with the, the university authorities they did not get them and that is why they sought to demonstrate in the first place well that's why they sought to demonstrate well i will say that still the, the you know the structures are there for negotiation and peaceful resolution at the end of the day. But we must not lose the fact that at the end of the day, we also have the bigger goal of getting both men and women, boys and girls, integrated so that they can develop their human resource skills for the benefit of our country. Right, right. So in the end, we need to now go to the table and try and talk. Well, definitely there mm. must be some talking. All the conflict, you know, resolution tactics should be used there must be communication. There must be um, vetting out of grievances. Everybody's aggrieved. Then, at the end of the day, find a compromise, but still looking at the bigger picture of equality and equal opportunities for both sexes. If this should come out with a decision to reverse that um, mixing of the male halls, what would you think? Well, that would be up to you and I and all of us. If we want to go back to a um, more Cumberland where, you know, uh, some people will bear the burden of taxes. You know, GRE is always talking about taxation. I'm sure it's where some people will bear the burden of taxes because they are better endowed, better equipped, better educated. Then, you know... <laughs> but does it automatically day, mean that if we do not have a mixed um, Katanga and Conti, we, we are definitely going to have more men coming out of school than women. Is that automatic? Well, I, I went, let, let, let me tell you, mm -hmm. I went to a mixed school, okay? Um, I was in Achimota school. And at that time, we had seven male um, uh, houses vis-a-vis -vis five. With time, due to population increase, some of the male houses like McCarthy um, House have been converted to female because there are more women coming into the system. During the colonial era, females were trained as... Well, they were not even trained, but the few got into telephone reception and nursing and teaching. And it, there was a, a kind of categorization of what a woman can do, what a man can do. But with time, we realized that it doesn't work. Even the so-called colonial masters who introduced us to this, um, this um, what do you call it, this kind of um, stereotypical education have moved on. After the Second World War, they moved on. They got more women involved in public life. So why do we have to also sit down and be using, you know, all this kind of hate and old um, boyism to discriminate? No, but the question I was asking really is that, in, in your view, is it automatic that if we don't mix these halls, we are going to have because... Well, if mm. I think in my view... If we, we refuse to do this mixing, then at the end of the day, we are still going to stay where we are, okay? Um, others moved on. When, when there was the um, mixing of races, people, even pastors used the Bible, Second Peter 2.12, um, to talk about how races should not be mixed and even liking the black race to animals and all that. But with time, there was Supreme Court and the government, there was a will, there was a policy, mix the schools. And over the years, we've had a lot of inventors and scientists and, you know, professionals who have developed the U.S. economy and are African or African-Americans. Why don't we give the women the same opportunities? Why do we have to say that we shouldn't mix them? Africa Hall was mixed <laughs> And um, um, some other halls have been mixed. My, some of my school, uh, you know, um, dorms, uh, houses have been mixed. If you go to McCarthy House and you're an old Achimota who was a, a young man then or a man, now you go and your, your house is um, occupied by females. Is there anything wrong with that? Let There's me go on the phone lines that. now so and please, speak let's with look at the big picture. Otherwise, we all back, go back to, uh, well, some of us have been educators, so we can't go back. But otherwise, some of our sisters will still be there waiting for you to send them all the mobile monies and 
What's yeah, let me <laughs> let me let me go on the phone line to speak with Dr. Jean Arba Yangsin in Sian. Dr. Uh, in Sian, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and thank you very much for having me. And good morning to your discerning listeners as well. That's great. Um, um, you, you you mentioned in the quote in the in the post that we saw earlier that you are sickened and <laughs> treating adult university students with such disdain in in modern times. Really, uh, I think Gloria here in the studio believes that we should look at the remote causes of this, which is really a matter of sexism by persons who are uh, residents of male halls and don't want to mix with females. And in addition, right. I've also said that <laughs> yeah. with students, we must use adult learning styles adult and learning training styles techniques. as well. Yeah. So, so Dr. Dr. Insia, what do, you, what do you think? All right. So, um, Matos, I won't pretend to have all the details of what caused the occurrences at KDUST. I agree with Gloria on one aspect, which is the matter of the communication, where I believe that Definitely, there seems to be some breakdown in communication between the school authorities and the students, and modern communication methods have to be employed in resolving this impasse. However, I disagree on the sexism issue. Um, I believe that university education should give you choice. You should be able to choose at that level if you want to be in a mixed hall, if you want to be in a single sex hall. Gloria may be coming from the point of view that she was in a mixed school. I wasn't. I went to Wesley Girls. I was in an all female school. When I was going to Tech, I chose Africa. I wanted to be in an all female hall. And that's what I was given. So that's one difference that you get between tertiary education and secondary education. You have more choices. And so for me, Conversion of halls, in as much as I don't know if that is the cause of the problem, for me, conversion of halls actually does the opposite. I think it limits the students' choices. Okay, let me. Mm. You have two choices between a mixed and a unisex hall. Now you have one. Let me go to Efiba Harrison on the other line and ask her uh, from the perspective of a student. Before they had some students say that, in their opinion, it's not about a mixing of halls. Efiba, uh, do you agree with that sentiment that this is not really about mixing of halls? Good morning, Efiba. Hello, good morning. Great. Um, we had wanted to have you here with us in studio, but unfortunately, um, course, we, we are doing this. I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to get there, but I'm in traffic. I understand. People would have to do it this way. I understand. I understand. So what so, do you think is the root cause of this issue, this whole fracas between um, campus authorities and students? Um, I've had this conversation repeated over and over again. Um, the... There were incidents that students were indeed not happy with. A lot of incidents happening on campus where students really were not so happy, all right? It has to do with them, you know, the consolidation of accounts and other stuff. But these are independent happenings, so different from what resulted into a protest. So far as I am concerned as a student, what I know as a concerned student for that matter is that we had incidents where students were brutalized by the school security. The SRC had spoken about it. Students themselves, individual students, had silently protested. And these issues were not taken seriously, all right? So, therefore, there was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration by students, which rather ended on peace all right? So that's what I know as a student. And that is the truth from the student perspective. Anything outside there that says otherwise is something else. But for the students, and especially the girl child, what I know is my security as a student wasn't assured. So I had to do something about it. That is demonstrating and letting the school administration come to the moon. But we aren't happy. And it ended, it ended up that way. So if you ask me for my view on really what happened, or what led to the demonstration, that's what I knew as a student. What do you think brought about this case where security personnel repeatedly, um, as you said, brutalized students? Were they provoked in any way? We've heard security personnel also say that they were being attacked by students. They were being stoned, the stones were being thrown at them uh, by students. 
come again. He said, what I'm I saying that we have heard and we've had recordings of security personnel being saying that, uh, also saying that students were throwing stones at them. They were they were also being attacked by students. Uh, one of them said, I can't sit down and let a small boy beat me, um, to use that expression. So is, is it, were these brutalities unprovoked on their own or what, what really happened? Um, really, uh, I, we can't say students were right out right, especially because they have been damaged. But then, the question is, even if, even if a student does a wrong, you know, assault a security, I think there are procedures that the university actually um, support or allows for students to go to students that actually violate rules. Each student or every student that does that should have been to that kind of procedure. But to say, um, because students are assaulting, Security, they can't really uh, watch and let us um, assault them because they are old people and all, which was never the case. Really, some uh, persons that were supposed to protect students decided to attack students when supposed they were supposedly attacked by students. It, it sounds bizarre, but then the point is, if that was even the case, they could have done the right thing. <laughs> if what we did was wrong, there was a thing that was supposed to be done right, and that wasn't done right. So they can't really use that as a justification to brutalize students or in the name of they being assaulted by students, which we never heard of. The only incidents we know as students were times where students were brutalized and nobody spoke about it. So it had to go to a point where students had to demonstrate violence to their, the, the, the school. Right. So... so uh... Because I'm trying to understand, these people could not have just come out and beat students on their own. I mean, on Friday, for instance, um, were processions allowed? Where where, where students the students start the attack on on Monday? We are told that the students were unprovoked. They began throwing stones at at the assembly hall. We we cannot at the administration block. We cannot totally absolve the students and say that um, it's the security personnel should have known better. Should the students also not have known better? Um, as a student, um, I'm not, first of all, let me say that I'm not a, an executive the SRC. Okay. I'm, I'm just a consent student. And some of these happenings on campus, when I got to hear of them, was the last two or three weeks incidents where a student was brutalized. Truth is, we don't even know. There are most of us out there who are victims but couldn't come out till now. So some of these incidents... Really, we might not know when it started. Some say three weeks ago, but I am even of the opinion it might have started long ago, all right? But the point is, what we know as students out there is that our fellow students were not safe, and we have to speak about it because we didn't know when it would have happened to us. So the whole issue of we um, vandalizing the place, I think it all started when, during the peaceful demonstration, students had gone short. Really, it's, it's, it's rather sad that when students are aggrieved and students already are disturbed in heart, mind, and soul, and we are out there demonstrating peacefully, and the police felt that there is a need to scare us more. Really, uh, that, that was rather unfortunate. Mm. I think some of these happenings or some of these um, decisions by the police rather escalated students' emotions and brought about the rather unfortunate um, incident that has to do damages of property and all that. These, these right. stuff are really regretted, and we are not so proud of it. But really, want to be assured, I think I've, I've, I've stated this all over as a personal opinion, that I want to be assured that as a young person, I don't have to ever in my life think that violence is the way. I don't have to ever resort to violence as a means of getting my grievances registered out there to the general public, and especially as a girl. And... Um, First of all, I am, I am known to be weak or a weakling. I, I'm already pronounced a weakling beforehand, all right? And uh, the, the situation is one that says, or the system is one that says, I have to be violent. And if I'm weak, then it means as a girl child, I don't even ever get to ever, you know, put my voice out there. Okay. Because I don't have the strength to, all right, if it comes to my individual concerns. If right. the system is, is the one that only listens and adheres to violence. And what do I do as a girl child or as a lady student who do not have that strength as the world really has made it look like the ladies are weaklings and we are not strong enough to be like 
fearful and all. How do I register my displeasure when mm. these issues pop up? Thank you, um, Ifiba. And hold the line for us for just a moment. We'll come back for wrapping up comments in a moment. But I have some messages here. I want to read them, then come to, doc- to you, Dr. Um, Jimmy Axon in Sia. Uh, Daniel, can you put yourself in the position of security personnel who have been attacked by these guys? Will you just stand and look on? Daniel, my daughter is a first-year student, and every night these boys hold their vigils. These girls have to stay out of the hall till very late um, before they come to the hall because these boys just intimidate them. Intimidate them. I was on campus once with my daughter in the car and these boys were going on their procession. One of the boys had gone naked and was dancing in front of my car with my daughter seated by me. Daniel, I am against students being manhandled by anyone, but let's not skew the discussion as though the students have done nothing wrong. I don't know if Cranting says, I'm really grateful to Gloria for her argument. It's about the bigger picture. I'm still an advocate for a privately owned fraternity hall off campus. The issue of just listening to the side of the students and ignoring arguments of authority does not resolve any conflict. Um, who did I just... Is, is Dr. Yangtze here on the line? Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm coming to you quickly to ask that. It seems like with the matter that we have before us, Yes, unruliness has been has been recorded on campus way before all of this happened. Uh, some would say that if you want students to be treated as adults, the students must also act as adults. What would you say to that argument? Definitely, I, I think that that's a fair argument to make. The truth of the matter is that the definition of an adult is a standardized definition. It's not your perception of who an adult should be. If the person is 18 and up, the person is an adult. Now, the people who are in tertiary institutions are mostly people who are 18 and above and should be referred to as such. Now, I've heard some KNUSD authorities and other media houses refer to them as their children, and it was an unconscious referral. You know, we've been trying to talk to their children for some time. Once you are already unconsciously referring to the students as their children, it colors how you dialogue with them. Now... I'd like to link this to other tertiary institutions because I've had an experience with a nursing training institution where in buying their perspectives for nursing training school, I had to get a broom, a hoe, and a catalog. And I could not understand why I was buying these implements, farming implements, for my cousin who was going to nursing training school. And this is a tertiary institution. And she, um, she was an adult as at the time of entry into this institution. So if the headmistress or um, the in charge of this school in this modern era thinks that to train a nurse, we need agricultural implements and a broom as part of nursing training curricula, it colors how she's going to dialogue with the nurses when they have a grievance because these are people who are weeding and kneeling down and scrubbing bathrooms. How, how do you dialogue effectively with them when you are already putting them in such a position? So the truth of the matter is, if the person is 18 and above, the person is already an adult and has to be able to make choices, good or bad. These people have their parents already at home. As the university authority, you are not the parents of the students. You are there to ensure security and to ensure that the person has a good learning environment to get whatever degree or certificate he came in there. Mm. But everything else, all the parents are, are just are not your business. And so you need to be able to recognize this, to be able to dialogue effectively with the person. But if you think that you can make the person come and weed and clean and scrub bathrooms and do things like that from the beginning, then it means that you already have a, a colored way of dialoguing with the person and it's never going to be effective in this modern day and era. Maybe it worked in the 1990s and in the 1980s, but with the current young adults, this will not work. So what would be the best way to resolve this solution in your view? To resolve this issue, sorry, in your view? I think that definitely looks like there are two parties. So... Clearly, whatever breakdown in communication has occurred needs to be restored. But on the part of the university authorities, I think it's very important that they actually learn what has changed in young adult communication. It's not enough to be appointed um, to head an institution just because of your educational qualifications. You need to have extra training in how to deal with the people that you are leading. 
And so it's very important that the heads of institutions have further training on how to deal with the current young adults. I also think that we need to recognize that a lot has changed. The way we communicate with our elderly hasn't changed much. We still say our pleases and thank yous and we put our hands behind our backs and we listen attentively. Not much has, is expected to change with that, but the way they communicate with their young adults has been because the current adult is different and they need to learn that as well. And it's also high time we realize that there is more than one solution to a problem. If you have a problem with rowdy students mm. or rowdy single-sex halls, there is definitely more than one solution to that problem. And all solutions should be explored. And the only way you get to hear all solutions is when you get to listen to all stakeholders. Okay. So these are some of the uh, the remedies that I think could assist with solving this problem. Thank you very much, Dr. Jean Yangson and Sia, for joining us this morning. Uh, if Fiba Harrison is also on the line, I'm going to take her final comment on uh, what she thinks the solution should be. If Fiba, you are, you are currently faced with a situation where you are unable to go to lectures, your university has been closed down. Um, what would you suggest to authorities so we can get it back and running? All right. So, first of all, um, some individual students, I think, at the end of the day, will be identified. It will, it will be so unfair. Uh, it will be um, further, you know, grievances actually um, impose on students to start once again if these individual students are ever stuck. If there are ever instances where students are stuck for either demonstrating in one way or the other or speaking about these issues, I think moving forward, these are some of the things we really please with the school or the government not to ever um, let them happen. But more importantly, I'm so glad that the conversations are becoming clearer. Uh, we are now knowing the roots of these issues. And hopefully, after these conversations, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to deal with the issues as it is. That is, from now onwards, what should be the focus? Should it be that any time the administration is going to take a decision or any time students agree they just have to be ignored. Or when there is an issue that has to do with student consent, there's going to be some discussion, some roundtable discussions for that matter, and okay. things are going to be heard. Even if, if, if you know, these concerns in themselves are deemed non-necessary, at least they should listen. Right. Take a word or two from there. If that is done, then definitely we'll know we have been listened. But more importantly, I wanted mm -hmm. to add, it's quite unfortunate, after this incident, there's been a picture out there that if we are we are to be feared and i'm just imagining going home and my mom hearing that i am i'm a radical person i'm, I'm violent and i can do some of these things the kind okay. of picture um the media and everybody else have contributed in painting to the world out there as one that is bad so i'm going to use your medium to speak to parents out there that welcome your words in in, in open arms because we've we've been to you know, trying at uh, times, times that we, we were more or less, um, you know, oppressed, times that we were never listened to at to a point there where we had to resolve to some of these uh, rather unfortunate incidents. So, yes, parents, we are coming home, or we are already home. Please condemn us no more. The condemnations we receive over and over again, I mm. think it's too much. We should be giving some assurances and some war comments instead of war We've been receiving um, ever since this incident. Thank you very much, Efiba Harrison, for joining us this morning. Let me give the final minute to Auntie Gloria here. You have already proffered your solution being a dialogue, but what will be your final word in a minute, please? Well, I would say that, um, um, you know, the issue of alumni, we have to look at the role of alumni. Um, I watched the alumni go to the president for audience, they sought audience to complain about the mixing of the traditional male, uh, you know, male halls. <laughs> I, I, I believe in mixing. I believe that in this world we need to mix right from day one. I've always believed in that. So I'm happy Africa Hall has been mixed. I was Volta Hall president. I wouldn't mind if, if it's mixed, if Commonwealth is mixed, because we need to work in partnership. What about the issue of choice well, that Dr. Oh, Nsian said? Oh, so I, I, will not 
I, I believe in mixing, okay? And I also... Is that not taking the choice away from um, some people? Well, we live in a, a world where we have to work together. We have to work in partnership as men and women. We must learn to know ourselves and tolerate each other. I guess that will minimize this issue of sexism in our society. And then I also look at the role of alumni. Um, I know some of them protested about it, but let's look at the issue of alumni in some other institutions. We have career centers in some universities, you know, globally, where they, they have an alumni database. And students who want interviews or jobs or information or counseling can use this database to assess alumni to help them to find jobs or to even practice interview skills to develop their CVs and you know, to so move you feel on. That should, so I think that should the, be the role. And of, I think that should, yes, instead mm. of protesting about mixing of halls. Mm. And then mm. when it comes to, I'm going back to the ruling government's manifesto, that the MPP will place emphasis on the continuous linkage of academia with industry and the world of work to ensure curriculum relevance, thereby reducing graduate unemployment. Yeah. I know that the KNUST, as far back as the 70s, set up an intermediate technology transfer unit at Swami Magazine, where they were supposed to supervise and give a theoretical perspective to the practicals of the artisans at that place. What has happened? These are mm. issues where we have to see academia merging with regular artisanal skills to help impact our communities. And then in, on the issue of vandalism talking of the parent who saw a naked guy i think vandalism it's we it's, it's profanity it's it, it generates all these profane songs on women's sexual parts it's a form of violence against women okay. and sexism discrimination is unconstitutional look at our constitution article 12 i'll talk to all these young lawyers who have come to take it up because we can't have a form of discrimination being perpetrated on our tertiary, you know, educational campuses. Mm. There's nothing to be proud about. It should be banned, actually. It's not on. Right. And then with the issue of agriculture on, you know, weeding and all that on um, nursing campuses. I do, I was trained, you know, in, in our in our school and we were trained to garden. At I, what stage? You, you see, know, the, the, no, no, you see, as let, you know, let, let, the okay. issue comes down to choice. If an adult is is choosing to do some uh, to to do something that choice is 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 perfect I, but then you see because there's racism and there's ageism there's re looking down and discriminating someone because I'm, of the the person's well, age I'm as well the, and if you uh -huh. look at the underlying um factors like mm -hmm. like dr Nsia mentioned and and ifiba harrison mentioned of persons being referred to as children constantly persons no, who need to be no. put under Everybody constantly but uh, the law says every person above 18 18 and above is an adult so I'm exactly not into that. no I'm, but what are I'm, the I'm going, I'm going to say that I see gardening as, uh, you know, enjoyable. Should people we be should not see it, it as punishment. Our schools should ensure that they don't use weeding as punishment. Otherwise, as a nation, we thrive on agribusiness. You are going to have a whole population that hates agri. But remember, you can even have your backyard agri. When you go to Rwanda, when you remember the operation, feed yourselves, we could garden and produce, you know, okay. fruits. I sell mangoes from my garden. So I think it's because it was inculcated in me as far back as secondary school. That you gardening is is, is, right. is is pleasure. So it should not we should not have uh, institutions using weeding as punishment. That's all I want to say. Thank and you. And we very should much. also be able to keep our environment clean, irrespective of what profession we, we are. We should know how to clean ourselves, clean our bathrooms, scrub and what have you. Of course, Thank of course. You. Thank you very much, Madam Gloria. Ofori Buedu. She is a lawyer and a lecturer. And we're also joined by Fiba Harrison and Dr. Ajin Yangsen. Is here anymore any who was with us in the studio as well? We'll take these important messages when we come back on Corruption Watch today. We will be telling you how a bottle of better malt was bought for 12 cities, 50 pesos. You want to hear this? Ghana has always suffered from internet disruptions. You've experienced it. And here is the unfortunate truth.